We're going to have a chat. Um, all living organisms age to death. And human beings age to death quite slowly. And the number one marker for ageing is the loss of skeletal muscle mass, which happens, some problems were found and fixed. Okay. Where's, where are you? And uh, the loss of skeletal muscle mass happens uh, from about the age of about 30. It's slow. But around the age of about 55 onwards, we're losing between 5 and 10% of our skeletal muscle mass. The quicker we lose skeletal muscle mass, the quicker we die. Because uh, it's, it's to do with the inability to play games and chew and swallow and digest and, and walk and talk and be socially you know, involved. So the loss of skeletal muscle mass is very, very important. And the physiology associated with that is to do basically with nutrients that balance the genetic material. Now, it's been about 60 years since Watson and Creek uh, discovered DNA, and since then we've gone to discover that we really have about 30,000 genes. Uh, you know, the Human Genome Project was, uh, was completed in 2003, and its completion allows, allowed us to understand more so the function of genes. They are not set in concrete. They respond to metabolism, not the other way around. And we are in the era of omics, genomics, transcriptomics, metabolomics, and 80 other terms of omics. But they're the main ones. The genomics, which is associated with what's going on with DNA and the effect of nutrients, uh, um, uh, transcriptomics is what's going on with messenger RNA in the production of a particular protein. We've got proteinomics, which is that protein production, and the metabolites that are associated with that. The era of the omics has allowed us to understand better the, the relationship between nutrients and genetic material, because this is an emerging area which is now nutrigenomics. And nutrigenomics... You don't tell me you found it. There it is, that one. Holy cow. Up there. Yeah, it, always, it always takes a woman, did you notice? Oh, I was not a <laughs> Which one? Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> All right, so aging is not really about growing old, but actually it's a degradation to failure, becoming ill, and then you, you die. Okay? There's, uh, there's a, it's a biophysiological response to aging. That's the model. Uh, metabolism and ageing, that's metabolism. When you talk metabolism, it's in there somewhere, okay? Anybody that memorises that is insane. So it's not about memorising that. And it occurs at multiple levels, from molecules to organ systems. And, you know, a lot of people talk about what goes on in fruit flies, in worms, in rats, in mice. As far as I'm concerned, none of these equate to humans. None of them. They're elegant studies, they give us ideas, they point us in the right direction. But if you've got a molecule that is increasing the life of a rat from three years and two months to three years and seven months, so what? It, it, as far in the research and the people that I talk to, that's just so what, okay? But if you've got a molecule that increases the life of a human being from today, which is a mean life expectancy of about 80 to 160, now we've got something. And how nutrigenomics plays a part in all of this is that we have got in our possession today to actually influence the genome from our, uh, you know, uh, with the nutrients and the physical activity and just the lifestyle changes that we have to actually increase life expectancy from about 81, in, well, in Australia, 81 for men and about 82, 83 for women to about 100, to 95 to 100, by just the lifestyle changes and that effect on the genome. Because it's about a regulated state. Death is a failure to regulate. We are all in a regulated state as long as we're alive. And we lose this regulation, whether it be 
immune function regulation that we lose, it would, regulation of maintaining skeletal muscle mass, regulation of maintaining our mucosal, like mucosal immunity, our ga gastrointestinal function. We're in a regulated state. And when people, oh, and another thing, and when people talk to you about free radicals, that's the biggest m mistake of all. There is no free radical theory of aging. Not unless you walk in front of a nuclear reactor and you get, a, and you get zapped. Then you do. Anybody that goes, and another example, anybody that goes out into the sun and burns their skin, that's, that's not recoverable, that skin. That skin dies. And a dose of high level of free radicals will actually apoptose cells. It's a, it's a safety mechanism. But under normal conditions, oxidative stress doesn't, doesn't exist. What we've got is redox signaling, and this goes up and down depending on what's going on in the cell. Now, when people talk to you about oxid well, what about oxidized proteins and what about oxidized fats? Surely these have got to be with oxidative stress. No. These are regulatory things. Certain protein or proteins get oxidized at specific amino acids to stop their activity. What's the use of insulin working 24 hours a day every minute of the day? What's the use of fatty acids working every minute of the day? So proteins get misfolded and so they need to be repaired. Proteins get severely misfolded, they need to be destroyed. The repair mechanism of proteins, fats and DNA and RNA is a normal process. This brainwashing that we've been going through for the last 60 years, that this is all about damage and we're all damaged here, it's not on. It's not, we've gone beyond all of this, it's not about damage. But I don't know what that critical factor is that makes us age. Okay. And this is about the all the damage. Now, one thing that I'd like to leave you with is that if there is an important nutrient, and I say this in a lot of lectures because I do a lot of research in this area, is that coenzyme Q10. This is a primary nutrient. And I think that as we age, we're actually losing this nutrient. And we're significantly losing it if you're losing skeletal muscle mass or smooth muscle. Smooth muscle um, because it, and it's, it's anchored on every cell, on every cellular membrane, lysosomes, Golgi apparatus in the plasma reticulum, the mitochondria, of course, the plasma membrane. And it, look at this, it's actually, it's a prooxidant. it's actually involved in making superoxide anion, one of the most deadly things that you possibly think of. You know, making this bad thing, hydrogen peroxide and reactive oxygen species and nitrogen species, all bad, they're not bad, in a regulated, production of these, what they're doing is they're, they're regulating gene transcription and, and regulation, both in the nucleus and the mitochondria. They're, they're actually involved with metabolic flux modulation and you know, are involved in redox poise. What does all this mumbo-jumbo biochemistry mean? It means that the cell responds to nutrients and then it affects a particular set of, uh, of, of, uh, of genes to make whatever that protein that that cell's making. It could be insulin, it could be glucagon, it could be uh, a, a white blood cell, it could be hemoglobin, it, it could be anything. And it is regulating it because we don't need to have this thing going on 24 hours a day. This is why different enzymes have got different half-lives. Some of them live for about 20 seconds, others live for 120 days like hemoglobin does. So metabolism is really controlling ageing, life and death. The requisite is for having this metabolic balance. Now, that's metabolic balance, see? Michelangelo's David, all right? Like many Italians, he migrated to the United States. And then when he came back, you know what I'm going to say, don't you? Uh, when he came back to Italy, he looked like that. That is dysregulation of metabolism. So we've got energy intake being too much with respect to energy expenditure. We need to have a balance. And the day once catabolic activity exceeds one's anabolic activity, that's the day one begins to die. There needs to be a reversal. <laughs>